So, um, yeah, isn't it now? It's out. It's now. So it's now. Yeah. Songs that appear on Isn't It Now have been around for a pretty long time. Since 2018, they debuted at the Music Box show in New Orleans. Mm -hmm. Um, Seeing as, you know... I mean, Soul Soul Capture is newer than that. Soul Capture didn't really... uh, I I don't know when Dave first did his own version of it, but the first time he shared it with us um, to collaborate was, like, I think right after we finished tracking time skips so that would have been like january ish of 2021 maybe okay. maybe to see us over the holidays of 2020 of like 2020 2021 is when he first shared us a demo for okay. for for soul capture and i was the only one that actually did any work on it around then like i wrote all the harmonies that i sang on the record um and then like added some synth stuff which that that version kind of disappeared but the harmony stuck but we didn't actually work on that song uh, as a group until august of 2021 so that was actually only a few months before we ended up going into the studio but i think every and yeah uh all the clubs are broken is a song also that he'd introduced quite a while ago but we just never i mean i I think we played it in some form in 2019 um when we were all together but i don't think it ever really caught like it, it just didn't seem to ever like nothing happened with it so that was very much like kind of like a towards the end kind of like pulled that one together but yeah i guess every every everything else was um i realized i'm gonna cut you off the songs that debuted at, at at in new orleans were magicians um royal which and those on time skips defeat um parts of, a part of prester john um and then uh everything else that's on time skips uh didn't really appear until the summer of 2019 like that noah's two songs gemini and broke zodiac and I guess, yeah, Genie's Open is another one that's like, it's, he, Noah had, obviously Genie's Open existed prior to all of this. Um, when Dave and Noah did the Sun Kongs touring, they were playing it, um, a version then, but then Noah's addition to it didn't come about until we started working on it in 2019. So anyway, yeah. Right. There's a whole slew of different. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, like, <clears throat> given that Animal Collective is known for being such a like transformative band and is constantly, you know, changing up the styles changing up the instrumentation like do you feel some sense of relief now that time skips and isn't it now are finally out there in the world yeah i do i mean with the caveat of it it, though it's a decision that we kind of all came to as a group i i I wish we had a chance to tour sort of post album coming out not so i mean I, i think we we are righteously in a uh whatever you'd call it like kind of a hiatus period like i think it's we we have been with this music for a long time but i wish that if, you know if the pandemic hadn't been what it had been i think we would have put some version of all these songs out in the world and th- there's a there's a there's a difference between what it feels like i think to play songs before people have heard them on record and what it feels like to play them after they've heard them on record and i like both for different reasons and it feels a little sad to me that we never are it, not never but it, for the time being are not going to have that kind of like all right, you finally heard the record, like, here's that song, you know, so that part's a little tough, but, um, but yeah, otherwise, yeah, it's definitely a relief. I mean, it's, it's, we, we, we put a lot of ourselves into all this music and, and definitely did not expect it to sort of um, come out in the way that it did. And, you know, the impact of the, of the pandemic and what that, what that, how that impacted the release and the amount of time that we were working on stuff and when we got to record things and all of that, which um, just is what it is. At this point, I don't really have like a, I wish things had been different kind of like narrative about it. it. It's it, it worked out the way it worked out. And there's probably a lot of really beautiful things that are a result of that. Um, so yeah. Yeah. I, I am relieved. Yes. I just, <laughs> For sure. I, I could have awesome. just said that. <laughs> <laughs> the um, like in an alternate timeline where COVID never happened, was the idea leading up with this batch of songs to just make one album or was there ever like two albums? Oh, I, we never got to the point where we were really discussing like, what would be on what type of release i so i can't really there was no like discussion that i would that i'm remember at least Um, (laughs) i think my guess is it probably would have been something more like uh one significant album and either you know one or two more eps or collections of singles or um yeah i feel like we would have found some other way to break it up um that would have would have probably fit more into just there being like kind of one primary album to focus on during this period of time. And so the fact that it got split up into two was was kind of 
yeah, probably not going to happen, but it, it's really hard to say. Uh, we're definitely not like, even the length of time skips or of, uh, isn't it now was, was like a, a fairly large point of contention within the band. I, I, there's definitely like a pretty strong, um, movement against sort of records that are too long. So the idea that we would have put out some sort of like, you know, quadruple LP kind of, uh, monstrosity, I think is very unlikely. I don't think that would have really ever flown with the group. I think it's, yeah, it probably would have been more of like a, yeah, pretty, pretty classic sort of thing. What some, some sort of primary album with a nine to 10 track listing and then some amount of kind of EPs and, and singles that would have backed it all up. So. Cool. Yeah. But, um, who knows? Yeah. It's, it's interesting to think about. And I, I know that you guys, um, we were talking to, uh, to Brian and he was, um, mentioning that there's a couple songs, um, the, the Noah led songs, Gemini and broke Zodiac were actually recorded remotely, uh, for mm -hmm. skiffs originally. Mm -hmm. Yep. But then they weren't used cause you guys preferred to, to be all in the same room for those songs. They just, I mean, I guess they just didn't feel good. I mean, we just, I think we, you know, everything else, I, I think we felt like got to a place that we all felt satisfied with and those just never quite clicked. There was just something missing and I don't think we were able to identify totally what it was. Um, they just didn't feel quite right. And um, so, yeah, we just kind of, we just ultimately ended up letting them go, um, which I think at the time, even the label was because the label had heard, I think they'd heard, heard them and they were like, come on, like we really, you know, like we really want this one on the record. I think, I think both, but for some reason, I remember them being particularly psyched on Gemini and we just were kind of held our ground and sort of knew that there was a, there was, there was a better version of it out there and we just hadn't gotten it. So. Nice. So I suppose that means that like, <laughs> nobody's really going to hear these versions the time the time skiffs versions of those two songs mm -hmm. or or is that some I mean, not, little not for now i mean they exist I, who's to say i mean i feel you know i feel like with that kind of stuff it's it's you know periodically there's a you know a, a reissue release or some sort of whatever that we're like oh you know what we actually have this thing and no one's listened to it in you know five years or ten years and then somebody does and like, it actually sounds pretty cool so you know you never know but at the moment uh there's been no there's been no talk of it so um, I haven't even listened listened to those versions since we kind of decided to shelve them. So I don't even know what they sound like. Fair um, enough. Yeah, it's it's fascinating. Like, um, you know, because you guys as a band, you must be sitting on a lot of stuff that like widely isn't heard by people because you make so much stuff. You're, you're each also prolific, and as a band, you're prolific. I was talking to mm -hmm. Danny Perez um, a couple years ago uh, for the 10 year anniversary of Odd Sack. And he mentioned that there's like a ton of alternate versions of the visuals and the audio because you guys kept sending it back and forth. And I yep. was like, whoa, that's that's kind of like mind blowing to think about as a fan of the music, because I'd be interested in hearing like every single different iteration of that and seeing uh -huh. every different iteration of that. Do you think that there's anything like I, I, I feel like when I talked to Danny about that, he maybe didn't even necessarily think of releasing it. Because he was like, yeah, maybe like, you know, if there was like a re-release or something, you could add that as like a bonus feature or something. Yeah, who can say? I mean, I, I on some level, I, my memory of like what all those things would be like would be more akin to, you know, when we go in the studio, we generally do anywhere from, you know, two to 20 plus takes of any given song and all of them generally have something in them that's cool, you know, but there's some point at which you're just like, that's the one that has all the stuff we need. And you know, I know that like for, you know, anybody who's a hardcore fan of any band or, you know, whatever, there's some satisfaction in being able to hear like outtakes and stuff. And th those things can be cool. But I also, I don't know, I think we kind of tend to shy away from that level of like overexposure of kind of the process or something. So, mm -hmm. uh, but I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I honestly, with the odd sex stuff, I would have to like, I'd have to, it's, it's sort of, I don't, I mean, it de that definitely was very much a process. Um, it was built like kind of baked into the whole idea of it that we would do a lot of that back, sort of back and forth but i don't necessarily remember at any one point anything that was you know that i'm like oh man yeah there was that one version of you know the like whatever whatever jam that like you know that like yeah it was, it was so perfect and then we altered it and like it's still good but like i think there was something we lost i don't i don't have any memory of anything like that but maybe somebody else does but we, we yeah we would just have to go through stuff and um yeah i mean outsack is such a strange released i feel like in our catalog i feel like for the most part it gets looked over it doesn't really get seen as an album and i think to us it was absolutely an album and i feel like for that reason it just yeah i mean i, I mean at the time i'm sure as you know it, like it wasn't 
it didn't get like reviewed in the same way and it wasn't like in shops like people you know record stores wouldn't shelve it because it was a dvd you know and we so i think it felt a little bit we, we've always been kind of i think frustrated and felt like that was in a in a weird way um i still stand by the <clears throat> decision we made at the time to like keep it to a dvd only release but in doing that we clearly like kind of you know ended up having it uh kind of it's kind of yeah, like put in, limits put, the uh accessibility a little bit there yeah for sure so yeah. It, um so yeah i mean there's in, in that for i guess for that reason there is part of me that always wants to find some way to kind of bring attention to it again but you know i don't know it's hard to say well, i feel cool. like at this point we have the you know the 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 benefit and the, which is awesome but also the the kind of the difficulty of being a band that not only has i mean just forget about the past it's just even in the current time i mean this last year and a half or so it's been crazy between you know time skiffs isn't it now bridge to quiet reset reset and dub spirit being reissued sevens coming out it's just it's sort of it's a lot it, it's a lot <laughs> and i think i think you know everything from like our from our labels perspective of of trying to kind of you know find ways to to you know produce and put attention behind all those things and you know we, we've been coming up against the reality of of even you know the the, the press at, at large which i think is something that we we've never really had to contend with this before but there, there's sort of like a oversaturation of just like you know we think you know it's like i think of noah putting something out as being very different from the band putting something out but i don't know if pitchfork or exclaim or stereogum feels that way for them it's just like oh another animal collective thing another animal collective thing another animal collective <laughs> thing so I think when you think about that and we're, we are still a very like active forward thinking group, I think sometimes the kind of like reissue look back stuff feels a little bit like, all right, I mean, we want to, but you know, that's going to take up time. And you know, mm. what, if we do that, then that means we can't do this and let's just keep going. So, but I'm sure someday, you know, that, or, that'd be cool. You know. I mean, it's, it's cool that, um, cause you guys, I know you played like screens, um, and mm. I think another odds that cut, uh, on the tour last yeah, year working yeah which was like the the kind of the there's two jams that are together one of them is like while where noah is walking across the boulders with like the white wig on yeah which is a, a song dave wrote and then that kind of transitions into tantrum barb which is a song noah wrote so they're kind of the same they're kind of on the movie feel like they're sort of linked together but yeah mm -hmm. we played that first part which is called working that's awesome yeah it's really cool like that um you know that 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 came like i, I feel like as a fan and many animal collective fans are like, I wonder if they'll ever play odd sack material. So it was, it was mind blowing to, uh, to see that. But yeah, I think if like, if any sort of, uh, you know, re like reissue of it comes out and there's, you know, bonus stuff, or even if there is like a digital version, I think so that more people can hear it, I think people would be blown away. Cause I do, I do consider it as an album. I listen to it all the time. Um, Cause you know, someone ripped it to YouTube or whatever. And that's the kind of the easiest way to, to go about it without a DVD player. But yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, like speaking of um, the label, I was thinking about like album rollouts and like, you know, you guys have had some really fun and engaging stuff with the last two records. Like, isn't it now the white label um, defeat vinyls got sent out? There's those cryptic postcards that just said, isn't it now billboards mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And then for time skiffs, you guys had like kind of like puzzle pieces scattered throughout the internet for people to find the back cover is this a, is right. that something that the record label is uh you know are, are they the ones kind of behind the rollout or are you guys like actively kind of coming up with ideas uh the, the ideas almost always come from us I, I mean i think there's generally some sort of encouragement from the label and from management to kind of like do something mm -hmm. so i think they kind of like the idea of of sort of that type of um process and uh, I, I honestly don't remember. I'm, I'm horrible with kind of like this type of detail. It's it's very possible that in some of these cases it might have been started from like the label being like, hey, we had an idea for rollout. Like, what if you guys did X? And then I would say if that was how it happens, we were like, no, nah, that doesn't sound very cool. But since you say that, what if, mm -hmm. you know? So yeah, all the ideas are always some things that kind of come out of um, out of our brains, I would say probably nine times out of 10 out of Dave's. So I feel like he's responsible for, for a lot of that kind of stuff, but I, I yeah, I don't totally remember. Um, the 12 inch idea actually might've been something that sort of came from the label first, but I think that we altered, I don't remember what their original like pitch for it was, but I think we had like a very different um, idea of how to do it. And th there's always a lot of back and forth. I mean, there's, there's things that like we want to do that kind of end up not happening and 
it just it's it's you know but yeah we sort of just always find some sort of super cool i don't know yeah super cool yeah like i mean you know i the day that the defeat white label showed up on my door was mind-blowing because mm-hmm. i mean you know that was one of the songs that fans have probably been bugging all of you guys at every show when's it mm-hmm. going to come out when's it going to come out mm-hmm. this magnus magnum opus uh of a song and then lo and behold there it is on, on the doorstep you know i was that was it was a mm-hmm. surreal moment and to hear it in, you know, such so beautifully put together and so beautifully recorded and it just sounds so good. Um, it was something else. It was something else. So that was, that was great. Whoever's idea that was, I tipped my cap to, uh, to you guys and, and the record label, if it was a collaborative thing. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of, a lot of fans, obviously super, super big about that. You guys, I mean, you, do you guys ever like check in on like some of those super fan forums and stuff like collected animals or like the discord? And because I, I feel like those are the guys uh, that are mainly putting these puzzle pieces together. Yeah, I feel like I shouldn't totally out my uh, I, I think I do, <laughs> but only <Yeah. laughs> I only do it kind of once. But like I did it once I knew the record had leaked because I just kind of I'm curious like what people are how people are feeling about it. I don't I don't like keep up with it year round. Yeah. So when like stuff like that was going on, like the puzzle pieces or the 12 inches, I wasn't, I didn't check at all, but okay. usually yeah. in, around any sort of release, I, I kind of just, I'm, for better or for worse, I kind of can't, I can't, it's hard for me to resist. So I'm kind of always just kind of curious, <laughs> like what, how people are reacting. Um, <clears throat> uh, yeah. 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 So, so yeah, I, I know that stuff, but like, it's like, yeah, it, it kind of like, I got wind of the leak happening and that things were starting to blow up and I kind of started reading that stuff around then and i would say like in the last week or so like since most of like the reviews have come out and i i've, I've kind of it's like tapering off like my interest in, in kind of checking things out is like less and then i also you know part of that is like i hesitate to even tell you that because some people will hear it and i i sort of realized at a certain point that that it kind of is a private space you know and i sort of feel like there's like i don't know i feel like it it's cool that people have a place that they can go talk about stuff that I'm aware that maybe if they thought that like one of us was looking, they might like feel weird about saying things. So I don't know. It feels like I'm like, I don't know, peeking into like a teenager's bedroom <laughs> or something and like let them have their space. But yeah, um, I, well, I think people would probably think it's cool. Cause I think, you know, for the most part, I, I, you know, forums like collected animals, I think it's 99% praise for whatever you guys do. So I think, I think. They yeah. And I, and I also, I, I think, I mean, part of my thing with that stuff too and I think this kind of happened around sleep cycle. I, I realized that like, I saw the most like, uh, insanely absurd complimentary stuff about what I do. And I also saw the most insanely, uh, like unnecessarily shitty stuff about what I do mm-hmm. and both spectrums and everything between that. I just sort of, I, it's sort of enough, not, I, uh, what's the word? No, I'm not inoculated me to to it like Mm -hmm. i don't i can't say like i'm i'm for sure like if i see something like really shitty it can like kind of sting a little bit or if someone's really bummed but for the most part i just sort of like yeah i I sort of like i don't like i've even gone on 4chan to check stuff out and been like oh shit like people are like hateful like this is dark you know but then somebody's like really stoked and they're like all right let's it's (laughs) i just find it kind of interesting at this point more than i find it like good or bad um even the stuff that's really glowing you know i mean it's Mm -hmm. you know people you know uh, and if if you're one of them no no offense but like being like they're the the beatles or whatever and you're just like thanks but you know we're not the beatles but (laughs) but thank you you know like cool like it's, it's nice to see that stuff and i think like realizing that that level of enthusiasm is there is cool. I just, the thing I actually find the most interesting, especially I've been noticing on this cycle for some reason, especially is, uh, you know, there's this like larger narrative about us kind of like we had the golden years and then, then it's like the jury is out and depending on who you talk to, like one record is the best thing we've ever done. And they don't even like the stuff prior to 2011 and other people. It's just, it's just like every, and I've realized that we've almost, almost by design kind of curated a fan base that doesn't agree with itself. And I I feel like there's almost not a single release that we've put out that there's not a handful of people that like champion it as the best thing we've done. I mean, I kind of, kind of without fail, it's like, there are people, you know, like, which I think, and yeah, I think it's really interesting. I think it's, it's like, I, I wonder like if other bands have that kind of level of like, I don't know discrepancy sort of or like or Mm -hmm. or like 
like everybody loves us, but for, for different reasons, for some people, it's because of Noah, for some people, it's because of Dave, it's starting to be because some people, because of me, for some people, it's because we make things like Tangerine Reef. And for some people, it's because we make things like Painting With. And, you know, it's like every, you know, there's the people that are like, oh, isn't it now? It's so like organic. And I love how like tight the like rhythm section is. And somebody else is like, where's all the bells and whistles? I miss all the synths. So like, I wish it, like, why isn't it like Painting With? And you're just like, man, you, you know, but then all the people that were like, Painting With is too busy. Like, why won't they go back to, and you're just like, oh, you can't, like, everyone has a different idea of like who we are, which is is pretty wild it's it's cool i i, I kind of dig it it is cool yeah for sure i think i mean like you guys have you know just done so much i think you guys have your fingers in like quite a lot of pies so i think that by doing that you you are going to get that kind of reaction from people that almost feels like contradictory at times where it's like you know because for me at least as a fan like i love how everything sounds kind of different but has this kind of spirit to it that still feels like you guys. And, you know, mm -hmm. when you guys do your solo stuff too, I feel like there's, there's always this kind of evolution, but the, the kind of like backbone of it is, you know, the, the soul of it, so to speak is, is what you guys have always brought to your music, whether it's, you know, whether it's stuff that, you know, pitchfork fans are going to go like wild over, or if it's just some small group of like underground, like, you know, people that like noise music or something. It's, it yep. kind of satisfies a, a little bit of both and and there there is overlap and then there's other people that are just like i only like this one sound or something but uh it is fascinating and i think it's i think it's really cool like that you guys are just able to do so much because like tangerine reef is one of my favorite releases by you guys and it sounds mm -hmm. nothing like isn't it now but isn't it now is nope. also one of my <laughs> favorite releases by you guys so nice it's it's hard to say um but yeah like you know speaking of the fan forums and everything um well you mentioned like that you you kind of checked it out when the leak happened so like you know maybe we'll talk about the leak a little bit you know where it's it's 2023 and albums are still leaking ahead of their release date how does how does this happen and how does it make you guys feel when that happens um i don't know how it happens i don't think anybody is totally clear on how it happens i mean every i mean i have i have people who i trust who have even been like i think the labels do it on purpose and like they just don't tell you you know I'm like, oh, yeah. okay that'd be interesting <laughs> but i know that like i talked to the label and they're like you know they're not bummed but they, they don't sound like it's what they wanted to happen you know but they sort of accept it i think so i, I really i don't know how it happens i you know i as far as i know we do everything we can to um you know it, like it, it's like we finished the record and the only people that have it are like us our manager like the like in this case heba who mastered it like the engineer you know it's just like i i don't know who you know and then once we start sending it out in a significant form we send it out watermarked you know digitally watermarked so you know i know there's ways around these things so I, I don't know i really don't know how it happens um and i don't i don't know i think i guess you know i think everybody feels a little bit differently about it i, I would say as a whole based on my sense from talking to the other dudes at this point, I think everyone's kind of just come to accept it like kind of a long time ago. I mean, it's been happening. I mean, I think when we were in our twenties and it was happening around, you know, albums like strawberry jam, it was, it felt like, you know, this, this sucks. Like, God damn it. You know, like we wanted to do this a certain way. And I think we just, it's, it kind of, it's just happened every time. It seems unavoidable. This one seemed a little early. My memory of maybe. It was like, like a month before the release, I think. Yeah. And, and from reading some comments, I got the sense that some people had it even longer and just it sort of was like, there was a few people that had it maybe like going away. I don't know. Somebody at one point like made a comment about having like, like heard it for the first time on father's day or something. And I was like, father's day, Jesus Christ. Like, that was a long <laughs> time ago. Anyway, I, I don't know. Anyway, I got the impression that maybe there was like one or two people that kind of had it for a minute, um, but weren't necessarily spreading it. And then, yeah, it, yeah. But yeah, a month out seems a little, mm -hmm significant I, like i don't remember what time skips was but i thought it was only like a week before or something um yeah i don't even maybe it was... recall i i at least i wasn't aware of a time skips leak i know like I, I'll, I'll tell you josh that when, here in toronto um the record store that's nearby my mm -hmm. place they, mm -hmm. they sold me a copy a week before it came out i guess Those... i guess they didn't know <laughs> <laughs> but i mean i had my own private leak i suppose at home with that record so uh, I, I got to enjoy that a week before anybody else did but um 
or I guess if it did leak some somewhere else, then maybe other people did get to enjoy it uh, before the actual drop. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's fascinating. But yeah, also on the on the on the topic of uh, you know the fans and um, these albums. So leading up to isn't it now, and you you may or may not have seen this if you were on any of those groups. There was a lot of you know like back and forth like hypotheticals about what the track listing would be like on this thing, and I don't think. Out of all the predictions that were there, I don't think anybody predicted what the actual track list ended up being. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> was was it difficult to sequence this album? Uh, a little bit. Yeah, I think it was a little bit. I don't know if we were all on the same page about it initially. I mean, there was even a point where it wasn't going to be all these songs. I think there was a point where it was only going to, like, Defeat was always going to be on the record. We always knew that. Um, everybody felt really clear about that. And I think because it's such a long song, there was a lot of discussion about just the length of albums in general. And I think there was there's definitely like a, a school of thought, which I totally understand. And I, I happen to not be on the side of. So maybe I was kind of the one that pushed it a bit. But of like albums really like the shorter, the better. Like they should, you know, like keeping on, you know, 50 minutes or less is like a great kind of marker. Um so at one point it was it was gonna kind of gonna be like an album and an EP and I know for my part, like I, you know, and I'm not saying other people didn't feel the same way, but I know that I kind of voiced that I felt like <laughs> it was kind of, REPs have always been something that have been really special. So it's not that I don't think that they have a really important place, but it actually felt more like an album and some stragglers when we did it that way. Like every every way that it was like, okay, this is the record. And then these three songs are an EP. It didn't, it felt really disjointed to me. And I just felt like, I don't know, we'd been through so I mean, I don't know if I, yeah, my, my particular views on these things like are emotional and maybe nostalgic in a way that I don't know if everyone else in the band shares. So this is very much like my own perspective on these things. But I just, I know for myself, I felt emotionally like the amount of work on every level that had gone into this whole era of making music, time skips included, and getting to the point where we were able to record in the studio with Russell and the way that it felt being in the studio, like that 12 days um, in Brooklyn with him was, I, I, I think all four of us agree, was just like a really, really special time. Like things really clicked in this really incredible way. And I it, it was um, absolutely, you know, in my top two or three recording experiences and I don't just mean like the recording part I mean like the way that we all felt as people and the way the music was feeling and the way it was connecting and I just it just felt really I I know for myself I just felt a really strong feeling that that what we had captured in that studio was meant to somehow be presented as like this moment you know and I just felt like by breaking it up to me it felt like doing a disservice to that um so I, I was I was a really big component of just yeah of keeping all the songs together, and then I think at that point, um, you know, there's certain people in the band that have really really strong viewpoints on track listing, mm-hmm. um, and I'm not totally one of them. Like I know how I know I have my own instincts about stuff. So if I had been left to my own devices, I would have sequenced it a certain way, um, but I don't. I don't feel like I necessarily, I don't know how to put this. It's like, it's not, it's like not, there's a, there's, you know, there's so many things within the group that are like these beautiful ways that we find to have a group voice and to have like a group think. And part of that is to kind of know when to be like, I'm going to let you make this choice. Mm -hmm. Um, So I'd kind of, I'd, I'd been sort of the one that, that really pushed to be like, I'd really like all these songs to be on the record. Like it would really mean, a lot to me and I, I kind of was very passionate about why I thought that was a good idea um and then some other people started tossing around a couple of different ideas and I would be like oh that one seems cool and well, you know what about switching that and then someone would be like no nah, I don't like that but like okay that's fine you know it's just kind of like let it be what it was going to be um and so yeah I don't know if there's like any sort of like deep I don't have any like deep like story about like this is this is the reasoning behind it like um I think it just kind of felt uh you know there was there was talk about defeat going at the at kind of at the end um mm-hmm. and i think sometimes that felt like a good idea and sometimes that felt like i think that's a hopeful song but it is it's a it's a hard ending and it felt like a kind of like yeah. you know this might be the 
the last record we put out for a while like this is like do we want to like leave that moment like somebody mm -hmm. barely being able to choke out the word defeat because they're kind of really are questioning whether they can keep going or not like is that really <laughs> how you want this to end so i think once that sort of we decided not to put that at the end then it was like where does that go and it it, it is such a it's such a mammoth thing you know it was mm -hmm. it was it was certainly challenging um but you know i really like the way that the sequencing ended up you know i think it i think it i think it i think it works i you know i peruse some of some of the some of people's ideas about like what mm -hmm. it could you know at least in it's i can't get into like the what if all of this was recorded together and like you yeah know, time time skips isn't it now was just some sort of i can't go there because it's just that's not the reality but in terms of isn't it now i, I i've seen some other ideas that i kind of get like why people thought that and you know but totally yeah it's it's all it's always like a weird a weird combination of like there being this like puzzle that you need to put together and there's like a best version and also it kind of being a little arbitrary you know it's like sometimes the third song on the record feels like it's in the right place because because you put it there you know what I mean and it, like <laughs> if you'd put it seventh it would have felt like it's supposed to be the seventh song right so it's just, I don't know if it's always as it's always as clear as you'd think you'd want it to be I think on some records it's maybe felt clearer than others um so this one this one was a little you know it was a little bit it was a little bit of like a a little hazier maybe than other mm -hmm. records have been and that, that that might be something that i think is sort of the result of of how things got split up um which I, is totally due to the pandemic you know but i i i i guess it, i've chosen and I, I don't i actually haven't really like heard we've been splitting up the press on this so much Noah and i did a bunch of interviews together so i know him and i kind of talk about it so, somewhat similarly i don't know if dave and brian talk about it the same way so maybe brian had a different take on it but i um i I'm I'm I, I feel like I can't not say that like the the pandemic had an impact on like you know we we we've been vocal about the fact that part of the reason why we chose the songs for time skips was just literally like oh we can do these to a click track you know right. and we can't do defeat to click track like that is a very but I I also feel and I, I know Noah feels this too that I don't I don't like like having that mean that like oh it's like an asterisk record you know mm -hmm. or asterisk records to me I think that there's like a a, a, there is a there's a way things work out that like you, they end up making sense after the fact you know and like all of this has been part of the process and like you know there's so many other types of things that you know songs that we work on that end up not making it past like demo stage that you know there's a reason for that and maybe the reason was because someone felt sick that day and they just actually didn't put the right energy into it you know it's just like there's all sorts of things that lead to these things being the way they are and this is the way it turned out and I, I i i think there's a lot of some sort of wisdom came through in like the records being broken up in the way that they did um so anyway definitely i i would agree <laughs> with that because um i you know if there were songs that were going to be like left out if it was conjoined or something like that i would personally be bummed because like i think that they're both they're both very special records but they both have a very even though the instrumentation is, you know, maybe similar more so than other, you know, sequential animal collective releases, I feel like mm -hmm. there is something pretty different about the two of them. Like, yeah, you know, they, they definitely yeah. stand alone. And I think, um, you know, like speaking of the sequencing and stuff and having defeat, like, you know, smack dab in the middle, I think a lot of people were like, you know, I would expect that to be a closer or whatever, but um, I think having it in the middle makes sense. Cause it's kind of unavoidable right there in the middle. Right. And I think that it demands attention. So, you know, I think possibly if it was at the end and people see that it's 22 minutes, they might be like, okay, I'll listen to a bit of that or something, mm. but it's, it's there sure. in the middle and you, can, you can't avoid it. And it's so, you know, captivating that I feel like having it there, even if someone was like, oh, wow, this is like 22 minutes, th they'll still get kind of like roped into it. So I think it makes sense for it to be there. Um, and you know, another thing that I actually keep forgetting this, but I, it's cause it's, this is, this comes up in a lot of interviews, but, uh, another thing that factors in is this, that we do do vinyl and that, that, that mm. dictates certain things as well. So you have to kind of make side split decisions. And so there, you know, defeat is one side. So that could have in that sense gone, you know, first in the middle in a certain way, but it would have depended on like what songs came mm. before and how you broke them up or it could have got at the end. And so I, that, that's part of it too. You know, it's like right. once we kind of, um 
you know you're going to start with soul capture well you only have so many minutes left on that side mm -hmm. so what goes there it can't be defeat or whatever so th those things factor in as well and i but that's true with any record we kind of have to we have to think about that um unless we would decide not to do vinyl like campfire songs for some that makes sense um yeah and i mean like yeah defeat uh, i feel like is kind of well obviously the the album's titled isn't it now after a lyric in there i feel like it is kind of like the the central you know it's it's kind of like the, the the crown gem of this whole thing right um mm -hmm. when when uh when greg spoke to brian about um the uh the album title we because i think i read in an interview somewhere a little while ago that you guys kind of like when you're kind of you know uh, agreeing on an album title there's kind of like a list and then it kind of gets shorter mm -hmm. and shorter and then you kind of figure it out uh brian was telling us that defeat was uh considered to be the name for the album uh, before you mm -hmm. guys settled on isn't it now no there... i really wanted that for sure yeah yeah no no it was like that was like he was like it's that's got to be called defeat <laughs> yeah were there any other uh titles floating around uh there were a few but I, I honestly can't remember what they are right now and even if i did i probably wouldn't say what they were but um the, the yeah towards i'm trying to think if there's anything that i can even recall that would be interesting to share <laughs> but i'm pretty sure defeat and isn't it now are kind of um Yeah, we're kind of the big ones. I mean, I think there was there's that, I think there was a moment where like we were like, well, what else could there be? And I feel like, you know, you sometimes just start like literally just grabbing at other song titles and lyrics. I might have been like, what if it was called Soul Capture or something like that, you know? Mm -hmm. But um I think Defeat as a song really, I mean, I think you, you you seem to already know this and I don't, you know, whether you heard it from Brian or whatever, but I mean, I, I we all agree that it's like kind of the spiritual part of the whole era you know i think mm -hmm. that it's there's something about that song that um just yeah i mean it, it's we we you know not realizing that the music box shows would be kind of like in a way the 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 sort of first shows or the sort of the preamble to the first kind of writing of this whole era we didn't even know that at the time but defeat was obviously a huge centerpiece of that and then as soon as we started working on music with all four of us and that song just always was this really powerful thing that we just, yeah. I mean, I, I, Noah thinks I'm wrong about this. Like there must be some exception, like some show where this wasn't the case, but I'm pretty sure we played it at every single show. I mean, yeah, maybe the exception is like a festival here or there, like desert days, I guess we wouldn't mm -hmm. have done it because it's just, we only had 45 minutes or, you know, pitchfork or something. But I, I think other than situations like that, if it was our show, we played defeat. I think every single time you, you probably can correct me, but enough, <laughs> I'm close enough. Uh, and there's a reason for it. It just, it just felt, it just felt like a, it just felt like it, it just felt like the thing. So yeah, I think that it being um, the sort of source of the, of the title uh, kind of always made a lot of sense as well. And I, sure. I don't recall any, any titles that were taken seriously that weren't, related to that song so makes sense yeah. it definitely makes sense um yeah it is uh i i can i can definitely say that there was at least one show where you guys didn't play defeat and that was here in toronto <laughs> okay. but <Sorry>. but <laughs> I, for, I forgive you guys because you played stride right and uh right. that song is you know i mean i think in terms of that it's not exactly in this like defeats it's a tone of its own and it does you know morph throughout the whole 22 minutes but i feel like stride is another kind of like you know more melancholic uh song on the album um you know the other ones maybe feel a little different but you know so you got stride and you got royal and desire on the last one mm -hmm. like are you comfortable becoming like the ballad guy of the band <laughs> uh the only reason why i'm not comfortable becoming the battle guy is just that i i i uh i do aspire to write different types of songs and i've no yeah. i'm starting to be like all right man like you got this thing <laughs> you do this all right it's pretty good but like pick up the tempo uh <laughs> try, i feel like try just like a like a like a, a catchy chorus maybe make someone <laughs> dance or something um but yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable with it. And I think that, that, uh, it's taken me a really long time to be comfortable with my literal voice and also like my voice in terms of like what seems to matter to me lyrically and, and what kind of messages I'm trying to get across. And I still, 
you know, I, I still feel self-conscious about it sometimes. Um, but uh, I feel like it's worked really well so far on these last couple of records. And, and in some ways, it, I mean, it's been interesting doing um, like why that over the last couple of years, because in some ways, like the version that we've been doing live feels sort of much closer emotionally to the intention of the song than the record, the version that ended up on Centipede Hurts, even though I, I like that version a lot. Um, but I think it was like trying very hard to kind of like fit into this like angular alien world. Um, I don't want to say at the expense of the song, but it definitely was like, a, it was like a different thing. And so, you know, that's also a mournful ballad in its own way and maybe a little bit more driving than Royal and Stride. Um, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what question I'm trying to answer now. It's, meaning, <laughs> well, I, it's meaningful to me to have these songs on, on these records and it's, and it's, and it's, I think it's been interesting too. And maybe this kind of go, goes, I think about this a little bit in terms of what I was saying earlier about sort of realizing that we've sort of cultivated this like audience of like very almost like differing at times opposing opinions. Um, you know, I don't, I, I'm very aware that my songwriting is very, very, very different from Dave and Noah's. And in some ways, I think there's a there's a version of me or a younger me that would have this like critical voice of being like, you don't belong to this band, like this doesn't fit, you know? Um, and I think that I don't feel that anymore. I think I actually feel like this thing that we've created is is always was more than uh than sort of what it felt like in the early 2000s even though that was an incredibly powerful incredibly moving and incredibly yeah i mean just an undeniable thing that i i, I felt like a witness of as well but you know this is this yeah it, i don't know it feels cool to to um feel the scope of the band broadening and realizing that like i'm kind of i'm i'm a part of that you know i think is is is, is interesting and, and I, I feel grateful for it and it feels it feels correct i guess to me others might disagree but it feels cool I, to me. I agree i think that you know this album uh isn't it now and time skiffs it's it's proof that you're all part of this band like it is such a a, a true collective i think you know like uh, Greg and I were talking a bit about how amazing it is to hear like your voice in particular all over this record, you know, and it's just it everyone's voice shines in these very unique ways. And I think you you all, you know, as as songwriters have a very unique style of approaching stuff. And that actually uh, leads me into my next question, which is actually um, when you guys are writing songs, especially from a lyrical standpoint, is it safe to assume that each like you know lead vocalist is kind of like the lead lyrical writer as well of the songs do you ever kind of take turns at helping with a uh, lyric writing for other uh, songs i think that's almost always exclusively the case yeah i'm trying to think if there's the you know it's it's very possible there are exceptions and 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 you know as i'm sure you've you've read in other interviews or heard any of us say we so rarely actually talk about each other's songwriting or lyrics mm -hmm. like we don't it's it's not like we all sit down and be like all right man so defeat like what's this about and like this third line here is that like you know so we don't actually have those conversations so a lot of my um sense of like what is yeah where the drive of like dave or noah in terms of like their songwriting comes from like i'm not always necessarily privy to and i i guess yeah i guess the reason why i'm pausing this is like i, I can't I, I I can't speak because I wasn't there for like painting with and Meriwether and Sung Tongs. Like I, it does feel at times like there's maybe even more of an exchange in those between the two of them than maybe like I'm aware of, but I don't know of any instances like that. I think it's more like, um, you know, I mean, we, we, we've had like two songs on this last record or, you know, or we, uh, Jeannie's open and, um, uh, Prester John, which were kind of like co-written, but like really just because like Noah wrote this bit and then Dave wrote that bit, but it's, it's, I, I'm not aware of there being any kind of like the two of them being like, all right, well, this is my lyric for this part. So you should change that to this. And if I, if I'm writing about this, you should make the topic of yours be about that. It's, it's, it's much, it seems much more to me to be, um, kind of like a, um, exquisite corpse kind of thing where it's just like, this is the bit Noah wrote. And that's the bit Dave wrote. And oh, look, if you just put them together like that, they work in a cool way. And like, you can derive your own meaning from it, you know. Um, 
so yeah, I don't think there's a ton of that that I'm that I'm aware of. Fair um, enough. Yeah, I, I yeah. If you if you talked to to David Noah, it's possible they would have exceptions to that based on different eras of what we've done, where they maybe were like kind of writing for each other or something. But I'm not aware of that happening. Fair enough. I mean, it still sounds like really cohesive. Is you know the a kind of I think an even more amazing thing if each you know sort of songwriter is kind of just taking their own thing. It really shows how the band complements each other because it doesn't sound out of place when you know the lead vocalist switches in, into the mm-hmm. next cut of the song it's, it sounds like the same band i, mm-hmm. I don't know if you, you guys i think you know it, it shows like that your your bond together is obviously very strong and uh, your instincts work very much in your favor um but yeah i mean like you know while while i'm on the topic of praising you i, I just wanted to make mention stride right mm-hmm. and royal and desire i mean stride right if, if you know if, if you check the forums i think is widely being recognized as like one of the fan favorites of this album uh of this era and uh royal and desire was uh, i believe on the list of uh top tracks of 2022 from pitchfork you know and it's a it's a cool. uh, it's not even a single so i think that you know speaks volumes to what you're lending to this band and and, and uh, lending to that kind of sound it's definitely resonating with a lot of people so um and myself included i, I love those songs so much royal and desire was like I mean, from the inception of down, down, down into that, mm-hmm. I remember uh, when you came to Toronto um, with um, Gang Gang Dance. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, I was played, doing that you, song then. Played that song, and that, like that was, uh, it, it was fantastic in that iteration. But to hear it turn into Royal and Desire, I mean, that's that song is very moving, very moving. Um, Thank you so, very much. I, I pr- appreciate that. I mean, yeah, it means a lot to hear. I, I I'm just saying it like how it is, you know. So uh, <laughs> thank you. All right. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, like, so yeah. Talking about those songs and like early iterations. So Music Box is where it all kind of began. Um, well, I mean, you know, for some of the songs. Um, what what like that was two days. It was professionally filmed and and audio was pr- presumably professionally recorded. Yeah, you guys did release like a digital. Um, I, I guess you could call it an EP with a few of those songs as well as accompanying mm-hmm. visuals now that we have isn't it now can we expect that there's going to be maybe a full release of these songs uh, of that performance yeah i hope i'm not but we're, we're, we're actually trying and we've been trying for a while uh it, it's literally actually down to some sort of absurd um difficulty getting the hard drives from the people that filmed it not oh, really? from any resistance on their part it just seems like a kind of a comedy of errors so i think down to like very recently hearing that like they had sent it via fedex and it like never showed up to the place that they said it was going to show up to and like no one's been able to track the package and so now we have to go back to them and they have a backup of it somewhere but they're taking a while to get to it so uh, we have wanted to and have every intention of trying to mix that whole show and in video and try and release it in some form and we're literally just we're our, our kind of our hands are tied we're trying <laughs> so that's the, be- that's the best answer i have if it doesn't happen it's literally because someone blew up a hard drive I, I, I it's, yeah it's, it should exist and, and we're trying to get it make it happen so nice well if uh animal collective fans are listening to this podcast and they want to go down to music box and grab that hard, I, I guarantee you someone will do it someone will go well, it's down not even, it's and, not even and hand box. deliver it no i know dude i i yeah i, I i'm as frustrated as, yeah, as anybody i mean i it's uh I don't know what to say. Apparently the, the music box people who are all wonderful people who like was friends with before we did those shows and, and keep in touch with less than I'd like to, but, but certainly have fondness for, they don't even have it. It's not them. It's, it's, they hired another company. And so whoever this company is, and I don't even, yeah. So I'm not trying to like bad mouth anybody. It's, it's, uh, you know, whatever. I just, whatever is going on. It seems like it's, yeah. So, (laughs) okay. um, Well, hopefully you guys get those files. we, uh, We are doing our best for sure. Nice. Yeah, it'd be really cool, I think, for people, especially for people that maybe aren't aware of the that performance to hear, you know, the the, the earlier uh, versions because they're, they're so good on their own. Um, but then to also just see the evolution is really cool. Speaking of uh, evolution of stuff, um, I know that you teased some Instagram posts about releasing a new solo album, uh, sort of more mm-hmm. piano based. Um, is there... Any updates on when we can expect to hear anything from that? No, I'm, 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 um, far, yeah, far too, 
far far too on brand to say that it's still very early stages and I haven't actually started recording anything yet. Um, I think it's going to be more piano based, but I, I I don't really know. I feel like once I kind of start digging into something, it, it can kind of like evolve. Uh, the piano has just kind of been the instrument that's been the most sort of like um, instantaneously engaging for me right these past few years, especially like I feel like I just nine times out of 10 when I go in my studio, it's kind of where I want to sit. Um, and I think I've been kind of wanting to, uh, you know, a lot of songs that I wrote early on were oftentimes the result of me like making a sampled loop and sort of writing melody over top of a loop. And I've found that to be an incredibly inspiring way to write, but also kind of limiting and sort of gets you, you kind of paint yourself into a corner. And so um, for many years now, it's not like just recently, but I think that I, I, there's something about, maybe I'm leaning even further to the point of just really wanting to be like, I play a chord, I choose a melody. You know, it's like, it's a very direct relationship that I can, I can, I can shift gears with really easily. Mm -hmm. um, so that's just kind of been, the most inspiring way to write i don't i don't actually know if that'll end up being i'm sure piano will play a big role in whatever the next record is but i don't know if it'll be like i mean I, there's times where i've been like it literally i could imagine doing like a like a piano songwriter record with like very minimal and you know additional instrumentation to you know it being as full-on as you know stuff i've done before um so it's hard to say uh, i have a bunch of new stuff for sure uh, a handful of songs which feel like close to being written and a handful more that feel a lot more kind of amorphous. And then there's a whole back catalog of stuff, some of which even goes back to way back in the day that I sometimes think I would like to like, you know, that I never recorded and would like to kind of see if I can kind of pull it up and resuscitate it. And probably with like a, a new feeling and a new bent, but, you know, kind of there, there's definitely some melodies from a long time ago that are kind of still in my head and I, I kind of go back to you now and again. So, um, and yeah, I, I intended to kind of be a lot further along <clears throat> this year than I am, but it's just been a busy year. And um, so, yeah, I don't know. I'm playing a couple shows in November um, with uh, Dave and Brian. Like I don't, um, we're doing like three solo sets at the same time show in Asheville and so I'm gonna that'll probably be a good impetus for me to kind of get some things a little bit more solidified and then I'm heading out to Portugal to help Noah um record his next record sort of as like an engineer slash producer um nice. and so that'll kind of be my focus like you know for kind of up up until the holidays other than like getting ready for my shows so I would imagine at this point it's more about when I get back um mm -hmm. kind of post holidays um that I will be uh, hopefully at that point have some more solid sense of like what songs I want to record and actually start getting into to doing it for real. Um, yeah, it's ridiculous that it's taken this long. I, I, it's, I, I, yeah, I don't understand how I keep doing this to myself. I'm a, I'm an incredibly slow human being. It's pretty wild, but well, all good things take um, time. And I it's, think it's sleep sleep cycle is a, is definitely proof that you need do just take all the time you want because this stuff we're coming up with is fantastic so i think we're, we're i can speak for all the fans when i say it's we're cool with waiting well i i, I appreciate that but i i also want i would be cool for my life to move a little a little bit faster you know <laughs> as you get in as you get into these these mid 40s I'm about, I'm about to be 46 it's it's you're you're a little bit more aware of the the length of the road ahead of you you know so fair enough uh, it, it feels like time to move a little quicker than i have been all right. Um, well, but I, but I, you know, I, I'm stoked to hear it whenever it comes out. So, um, thank you. I got a couple more questions for you here. Um, sure. So, let's say uh, someone's getting into Animal Collective for the first time. What's what's the introductory album? I mean, this kind of goes back to what I was saying. I just like at this point, <laughs> I'm not even really sure if I have a clear answer for that because I because I read and meet fans who are like. I came into this band because of Centipede Hurts and it's like, mm -hmm. that's the best record you guys ever made. And I'm like, right, well, go read the articles from you know 2012 when it came out. Uh, you stand apart from everyone else. So I, I don't know. I, and I, I guess I kind of really, yeah, having, having still, um, I guess, uh,
Hmm. Tough question, huh? <laughs> I probably, I, I, I don't know. This is like a, yeah, I, I think my true answer is what I just said. And I kind of actually really like that people would, you know, literally like somebody would be like, I got into this band because of, I don't know, transverse temporal gyrus or something. And why don't they make another record like that? Um, hmm. But I don't know. I, maybe, maybe I would say Strawberry Jam, maybe to me. But maybe I think it's a fair Just because I, I think I feel like it kind of, it, it's sort of, it feels like kind of like a linchpin in the middle of like a lot of different energies that we had. It doesn't touch everything, but it touches a lot of it. And I think, I think with, even though, I mean, it's a, it's a, yeah, it's a wild one to reference because I think it was a tough one for all of us, but it, it had, it, it just has something going on that I feel like is, is, yeah, you're going to, you're probably, if you like something in there, you're going to want to, you're going to want to check out what else is going on. And I feel like in some ways, yeah, weirdly, I feel like that's like one of the, one of the, uh, this is, I don't mean this to sound so negative. It's not negative, but maybe that's one of the issues with Meriwether is that I think mm. that it does something that though I, if you know us and know the soul of who we are, like you hear it and everything else that we do, but I think for certain people, it was like, it had a certain sheen to it that like, because it doesn't really exist quite in that way anywhere else, everything else feels like it's not that. And I don't know. Like, I don't think feels does that to people. I don't think, you know, maybe, I don't know. I know. I don't know what I'm saying. I'm just bad. <laughs> I get to that. I think I people should, people should spin a wheel and wherever the wheel lands, sure. that's what they should listen to first. <laughs> yeah. I think, I mean, strawberry jam is a good answer. I think it's like, it's, it's got a little bit of everything and and you're right. If, if people can latch onto something there, there's definitely something in, in all the rest of the records that will, uh, will work for them. Uh, now here's another loaded question for you. So, uh, desert Island question, but it's with your band members, solo projects, one of each, you can only take one record with you to the desert Island to listen to forever. Which ones are you taking with you? Ooh, that is really tough. Um, I would say, um, for Dave, I think it's, I guess I'm going to say down there. I think it's down there. I think that one like has always been. Um, there's like. Um, yeah, I don't know. It, yeah, it is. It is self-serving, but I'm. It's it's either down there or it's eucalyptus. It's one of the one of the ones that I recorded. <laughs> I just feel like they're like the most. There's something there's something like through and through that kind of cut to like a, a very deep soul of Dave's that I love very much. And, um, you know, it comes through an animal collective record sometimes as well. I mean, in some ways always does, but you know, he, mm -hmm. it, it's this, it's this very particular kind of like emotional depth and vulnerability that I think on both those records is there. And, and I, you know, I happen to really like the way they sound. And so, um, um, with Noah, what do I want to say? I guess I want to say. I don't know. It might actually be Tomboy. It might nice. be Tomboy. I think that, I think that, uh, I mean, I know person pitch in some ways is like a very obvious answer that many people would give. And I think for really good reason, and it's, it is, a, it's a really stunning work on a lot of levels but i feel like it it there's there's like a i'm gonna get myself in trouble for this one i feel like person pitch is like maybe like the last record of like his childhood or something it's mm -hmm. like it's a it's which is childhood is beautiful it's but it's like there's a there's Tomboy was like this this moment where I think he was trying to really like ground himself into like who he is as a songwriter and 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 a certain type of like self ownership, maybe even especially out, outside of the group, um, which person pitches too. But I don't know. Tomboy feels like it's like this kind of yeah. I don't know. It just really feels like Noah to me. Um, and you know, I mean, I've I've spent time with 
it's really crazy actually i just was with noah in lisbon and i was helping him <clears throat> kind of organize his studio because that's where we're going to record the next record and uh he has like a lot of stuff there they're just like accumulated including like boxes of stuff that he's like got from his mom's old house um when she moved and so he has all these boxes of like cassette tapes a lot of which are like the old four track tapes from when we were like fucking 13 years old and wow. i've been listening to that human being uh jesus christ i almost started crying uh, <laughs> make music make music in a way that i found really pretty stunning since i was you know 12 13 years old i guess 13 years old that's incredible it's pretty pretty crazy and you know i mean i i hear him through everything that we've done including all the stuff with animal collective but yeah i don't know tomboy somehow feels like it's like this kind of it's it's really him it's not animal collective it's like that's noah um and i think that he is 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 an incredible member of animal collective and is obviously like an irreplaceable voice and like what this group is but i think there's a him that exists outside of it and i think that um maybe through a lot of the 2000s so like that didn't really get to exist and you know, it came out through what he would do on some tongues or, you know, mm -hmm. kind of, you know, and obviously again, like a hundred percent him, but I think that there's something in Tomboy that feels like very personal to him. Um, and uh, with Brian, man, it's tough. There's, uh, I would almost cheat a little bit on this one mm -hmm. and say that uh, in general, like the tape chance series that him and Dave did together, I think is right. like fucking stunning. Like, I don't remember which one. It, I think it was Tape Chance for Spring that they played for us um, when we were in 2019, we first got together to like work on the this era of music um, in the like Tennessee sessions or whatever. Mm -hmm. And they had finished Tape Chance. I think it was the spring one. And we had like finished the day of practicing and eating dinner. And then they were like, you guys want to hear it? And we had a PA set up in the room that we were playing in, but it was like also just our living room. And so I just laid down on the floor with my eyes closed and might've been one of the rare times. I don't really like smoke weed that much anymore because it's not good for my brain, but uh, I think I might have that night. And I just, just think it sounds incredible. And as much as, as much as I think Brian really gets to shine on Animal Collective Records in general, um, and is such a huge part of how our how we are, who we are, like in a in a just irreplaceable way. I feel like there's something that when it's a project like that, it just is even more like apparent, like how kind of brilliant he is um, with that kind of stuff. Um, so that's that's what I would pick. But I, I yeah, um, I also kind of feel like he. Uh, what am I trying to say? Like he, he's, 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 he's still, he hasn't made his like best record yet. Like on right. his own. Like, I feel like that's like, it's, I think that him like playing solo recently in the last couple of years is like sort of a new, newish muscle for him. And, and I think he's really coming into his own in that way. So I'm kind of really excited to see like what he does with that. Him and I have been doing <clears throat> a lot of soundtrack work the last few mm -hmm. years, like scoring, scoring films. Um, we've done him and I have done three together only one of which included Dave but two of them have just been the two of us Crestone and um this movie Jetty that hasn't really come out yet but we just finished over the summer um and he's just he's he's yeah he's kind of just really brilliant when it comes to like just making these kind of like incredible soundscapes so anyway yeah my answer is 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 tape chance for spring which technically is also him and him and dave but i'm, I'm giving brian a lot of credit for that so. <laughs> awesome great answers um okay so my final question here and kind of answered it along the way is you know what's next uh for animal collective what's next for you guys the solo project sounds like the most immediate thing for you is working on this this record with with noah is that um i know that that title sinister griff has been jumping around the the fan forums for years is that is that what this project is I, I don't know if he'll stick with that name or not i haven't actually had that conversation with him but yeah that that's what this is cool um, those are some yeah. of the songs that he played in madrid like a couple of years ago mm -hmm. 
Yep. Nice. Yep. Cool. Um, and then yeah, and some, and some newer stuff. Sweet. And then you've got uh, time, presumably, to work on your stuff next year. But Animal Collective are not going to be touring or putting out an album for a little while. Yeah, it's going to be a minute. Yeah, we're kind of okay. we're we're moving into one of those one of those moments. Um, yeah, I think just everyone needs like some space to be to be focused in other places before we kind of get back together. I mean, you know, at the same time, you never know. It, it's it's really always hard to say. And I feel like whenever whenever the kind of the gears start clicking is is never really predictable. I mean, I don't think. Um, I mean, I guess it was very much like a it took a long time, but I don't think like when, you know, me, Dave and Brian worked on the tangerine reef stuff together. And then that didn't lead directly to, but sort of piggybacked with us doing the music box stuff. Um, in some ways, either of those projects could have been, or neither of them could have been sort of the beginning of us starting to talk about what would be next, but it turned out that the music box was or music right. box was. So you never really know. I think it's just, I think we like to kind of leave things. I think we like to get to that place where, the moment when it's going to feel like there's a reason to have that conversation again is because it's for, for an organic reason, organic reason. So, um, yeah, I think, uh, I definitely need to record a record. It's really important to me. Um, I would, I would feel like I was doing myself a, a disservice if I didn't do that before we got to our next thing. I know no one wants to record a record. Um, I haven't heard Dave talking about recording a new record and at the same time, like he's literally just always writing. So who knows, who knows, he may be sitting on one and he hasn't told anybody. Um, and yeah, and, and me and Brian and, and to some degree, Dave are wanting to, to continue to be doing score work as well. Um, some of which is just, uh, you know, an economic thing, but you know, it's, it happens to be something that we enjoy doing. So um, that's cool. And yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah, some other other things that are in the works that I, you know, that are definitely like group related, but nothing that would be like the next album or something. I think we're just kind of trying to find ways that we can sort of continue to feel like we can make things and share them with people in a way that that feels engaged and engaging for us and kind of allows for us to kind of continue to produce things at the rate we seem to produce things, which doesn't always fit with like the larger album cycle. Mm -hmm kind of realities and so we're kind of trying to figure out if there's some ways that we can do that in a in a way that yeah is a little bit more consistent or something and um yeah that's kind of yeah. so yeah cool well that's uh it's super exciting whatever you guys do uh i'm always there for it um is this uh this documentary that you guys scored jetty is that is that something that might come out uh, in a physical form kind of like Crestone or uh, or the inspection I'm not sure actually I mean the the film director hasn't even really it hasn't even really hit festivals yet so there's sort of like mm -hmm. a it, it wouldn't make any sense to release it as a score until it becomes sort of a viable film on its own um, and the first process in trying to get to that place is just sending it out to festivals and having it play at some places and see if it gets picked up by a distributor or something. So there's a whole process he would have to go through first um, before that would even be a thing. But if it does, at some point, I would hope so. It's certainly, I think that Brian and I feel um, pretty psyched about like what we made. And, and uh, I think we like the idea of when we make scores to have them be something that's available for people in some form. Um, so, yeah, but I don't think it'll be anytime soon just because, yeah, like I said, it's, he's got to go through the whole festival cycle and, and, uh, that can take you know months or you know it might even be like a year or something so but fair enough sweet well yeah like i said i'm i'm there for it no matter what comes out um you guys have done a fantastic job with isn't it now this era of songs is just i think like some of the most cohesive work that you guys have done as a band and it really really showcases all of your individual skills and everything that you bring to the table is that no music videos for this album are there going to be some music videos there's no music videos for this album yeah mm -hmm. my answer for that will be pretty dissatisfying i think um, <laughs> but it, it's they're just a weird thing i think we end up feeling like this weird tension between it being this thing we're supposed to do mm -hmm. and but it's always a it's a it's a budget thing and then you know the the, the truth is is i don't think we're always as satisfied with our videos as we want to be so there's mm -hmm. sort of this thing of like we you know we I think we've just kind of been a little like burned with the process a few times. And for whatever reason, 
this particular time around, like there was, it was very difficult to get any momentum going within the group for any enthusiasm. And it just felt like anything you were going to do was going to just be, you know, feel like destined to be a disappointment or something, which is not a, you don't want to make stuff that way. So I, I you know, I kind of, I sort of wish there had been in the sense that like, I totally get the purpose that they serve and I know it gets people psyched, but I just, we just never, it just never really materialized. That's the yeah. best answer that I have. It just yeah, kind of, okay. they just yeah. kind of, they just kind of <laughs> disappeared. Um, so yeah. I, there's no, there's not um, going to be a 22 minute short film for the music video of defeat. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, there, there could have been, should have been, I don't know, but I don't know how, yeah, it was just, it's just the idea of like how, to, I mean, it's certainly that idea came up, but it just, it's, it's, it's a surprisingly winding and weird road between like having an idea like that and actually like, you know, figuring out how to, how to, how to fund it and budget it and, and execute it and, and, do all of that in a way that feels like we're actually going to be psyched about the end product. It, it just, it's sometimes it, yeah, it just, I think it just felt ultimately this time, every time it came up, it just felt a little bit too daunting, which yeah, feels a little weird to acknowledge, but it's, it's, it's the only true answer I can give. So well, not this I, time I around. Appreciate the honesty with that. Um, but you know, I think the music speaks for itself. So if, uh, if it's audio that we have for, for this, this album cycle, um, I think everyone's more than satisfied with that. Um, Josh Deacon, I have to thank you immensely for taking the time to speak with me and, uh, you know, share your answers to my questions. Um, yeah, nothing but love for you guys and, uh, the band and and the music. It's, it's incredible. I've been listening to you guys for over 20 years and, uh, I'm going to continue to, and, uh, the fan base, sometimes they're a little hardcore, a little, a little nutty, but, uh, we, we all very much feel that the music, you know, hits some spot inside of us that really, uh, you know, I don't want to get too sappy, but I feel like, you know, really it, it affects us all in a way that, that, that brings the community together. It's, it's a beautiful thing, you know, that's what I'm trying to say. It, it's awesome. No, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really, I'm very appreciative of it. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm glad you guys all exist. So thanks for, thanks for caring so much. And absolutely. Thanks for talking to me. I appreciate it, Jordan. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, for sure, man. All right. Well, I'll let you get back to your your day and uh cannot wait to hear whatever comes next. And um I won't be able to to go and see those solo shows in the States, but if you uh come up to Toronto, I will be there. Cool. Yeah, the whole idea is once I actually have either a record that's on its way to coming out or is actually out, I I want to tour as much as I can. I, I love touring and I, I love playing shows. I just I I think I as much as like the time you saw me with gang gang dance was fun. I think I just was starting to feel this thing of like, okay, I have this one record that's like six years old and like, you know, I'm either playing songs that people have already known for a long time or a bunch of stuff. No one knows. And I know. I just, am like kind of ready to put something out and tour behind it. So I think that'll be, but once I do, I will definitely be in Toronto. So sweet. Love it. Alrighty. All right. Okay. Have a great night. Thanks Jordan. You too. All right. Bye.